morning's service because Brian has mostly learned how to use the organ, which is exciting. And so we're just going to embrace some time to have silence because he cannot teleport. Um, so, but we're glad that you guys are here at First Press and welcome to everyone. We'll say more later.
If you're there with us on Zoom, we see Jim and Colleen and Lynn. And on Facebook, we see Sandy and Jim and Audrey and Aaron and Leslie and perhaps others that I haven't gotten to check yet. We're so glad for all the ways that we can join together and worship God. Announcements can be found on the back of your bulletin, but before we get into announcements, I'm sure there's a clipboard or two. We have a tradition. It's not required, but if you are new, visiting for the first time, coming back after a long time away, we'd love you to introduce yourself and say who you are and where you're coming from. Is there anyone who would like to introduce themselves this morning? Well, we're glad all of y'all are here. Um, and at this place, as you saw last week, we received several new members. If this place is beginning to feel like home and the place where you'd like to work out your Christian journey with us, we receive new members every month. It is utterly painless, painless and actually quite fun. So talk to me or someone, an elder or deacon, when we're having snacks afterwards, if that's of interest to you. Announcements can be found on the back of your bulletin. And are there ones folks would like to lift up from the congregation? I see Lori. Hi, I'm just looking to see the date, but we'll add that in. I just want to let you know that for the men's shelter, Mona and I got together and we changed the little format uh, to make it easier. We put one to two people for main course, so if you want to do a buddy system and, and split the cost on the main course, it makes it a little easier to sign up for. Um, we did salad and vegetable, bread and beverage, and breakfast. So there's only one, two, three, four categories. I'm not going to pass the clipboard around today. Yay! Um, I'm going to put it over on the little table in the room where we have refreshments because it is early. This is from the fourth Thursday in March. So you can, and we want to make sure that you get your name and your phone number so that we can just give you a call to remind you to give you more of the day off. Wonderful. Thank you, Lori. And if y'all remember the gripping drama last time about the men's shelter, yes, it was last Thursday, and y'all did a great job. So that was it. Yes, Dan. I just want to say that. Here, I'll give you the mic because folks online want to be able to hear. There you go. I just want to say that like, this last week in experience I had the, uh, we had the salad, you know, for the meal to take. And I sat over there, and uh, one of the guys there was eating, eating, and he said, is it a cake? And I said, no, it's a salad. <laughs> and I, I, I have heard that, you know, I wish it would have been a cake for him, because he, and uh, we're wondering maybe if we could have dessert. I don't know if dessert is on We took out dessert because a lot of the grocery stores Donate oh. donuts and cupcakes and all of it. So that's why we took it. Yes, let them eat cake, but also let them eat salad, which is a bit more nutritious. <laughs> <laughs> we started a new uh, kind of thing here at the church on what's the last time I try to do uh, a soup on Sunday, and we're doing it on the same day that we're having as the church. Which is the 17th? The 24th. 24th, sorry. 24th. And we need uh, four or five soups. Maybe a variety of breads, fresh breads, or a lot. And that's it. If you'd like to sign up, I'll send it from here on up. We get some trust. We may come around. We have several Sundays. Excellent. Sign up for soup Sundays. And I think the kids at Messy Church might be helping provide the bread. Is that right, Sherry? Yeah. So we'll be good on bread. Have some fresh made bread. Um, any other announcements? I got one. Mark. I just want to say we will have um, we will have bell practice next week and not choir because I won't have enough people, enough voices, only two voices don't make the choir. <laughs> but um, I will following week we will start bell and choir this week. Excellent. So bells, you're ringing this week. Choir, you get a break with your allergies to rest your voices. <laughs> All right. Any others? I'll draw your attention, if you're on the property committee, we are meeting tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. in the lounge or on Zoom. We're getting great motion, so thank you, property committee. And if anyone wants to be on the property committee and is free tomorrow at 3.30, feel free to come. Or if you're not free tomorrow at 3.30, just tell me you'd like to come. And finally, I will be out this week 
And you guys have a great new or great preacher that you will know and love. Uh, Dave Wasserman is back from Costa Rica and will be leading worship and communion next week. Thank you, Dave. Um, if y'all have this week while I'm out, um, you know, if, if you've got a pastoral emergency, I'm going to encourage you to call Dave. And you'll notice, as he said in the newsletter, your deacons. We have put deacons flocks up on the uh, bulletin board and pictures of your deacons so you'll know to recognize them. So if something comes up, feel free to call one of them. Any other announcements? Then I'll invite the children forward for a moment on steps. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing? Good. Hi, little mommies. How are you doing? All right, let's do our names just in case anyone doesn't remember. My name is Jenna. Hi. Riley. Leilani. I'm so glad you guys are here. Can you tell me one exciting thing that happened this week? I went fishing. You went fishing? Did you catch anything? Only on your dad's rod. Only on your dad's rod. I like that you <laughs> caught it on his rod. Uh huh. Nice. Nice. That sounds really fun. How about you, Leilani? Is something, what happened this week for you? Did you go to school? Uh huh. Did you have fun at school? Mm -hmm. Did you hang out with your brother? Does he, what does he do these days? Does he kind of cry and sleep a lot? That is what babies are good at doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, we have got these again, and they might look familiar. Do you remember what these are? Yes, they are the Yes, you can color the fish in. So I'll give one to you. Do you want to take one to your brother? All right. So you can color, and if any of the grown-ups want them, we have an abundance. You color, you can color the fish in, and then you can make it into a bank, like a little piggy bank, but I guess it's a fishy bank, not a piggy bank. <laughs> and you can put your, a fishy bank, put your extra coins in there, and then there's a big holiday coming up in about a month. Do you know what it is? Oh, summer, spring. Spring, that's right, spring first, and it's Easter. Yeah. Believe it or not, Easter is only a month away. So on Easter Sunday, March 31st, we are going to take up a special offering that will help people who are hungry, people who are poor, and people who have had some sort of disaster, like a hurricane or a tornado or a fire. Uh, two years ago when we had the big fire here, we some of the money that we all put in our fish banks went to go help the people affected by the Cap Canyon Hermit's Peak Fire. So we're going to put our pennies and nickels and such together. And then on Easter, you can come and put it up in the offering plate. Does that sound fun? All right, and you guys are going to... Did you say no? <laughs> okay, I appreciate your honesty. Does it sound like maybe not fun, but a good thing to do? Yeah, yeah. That's, I, that's true, that's true. I, I, like, I like that you don't tell the lie, brother. So you guys are going to go to Sunday school with Stan and Tina, and I think... You guys are going to learn a little skit. So at the very end, you guys are going to come back and show us your skit. What do you think about that? Do you know what a skit is? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so fun. So you guys are going to come back and perform? Well, that's a good day. That does sound like fun. Yeah. Well, you think so? Uh, Riley's cousin is singing today. So he's like a third cousin. But if we can bring him out when uh, oh. he's singing, that would be nice. I didn't know that Shiloh was your cousin. That's awesome. That is a beautiful small world. All right, I'll let you guys head off to Sunday school, but what is it we always say? The congregation says, may, may God, God be with you there. there. And we say, may God be with you here. All right, you guys go have fun. You want to take this down home? Yeah, thank you guys. All right. Let us continue to worship God. Prayer for illumination. Merciful God, help us to see you and the message you intend for us in your word read and proclaimed today. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, 
verses 1 through 17, which you can find on page uh, 66 of the Pew Bible. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in the town. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of our God. Thanks. Our epistle reading is from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 12 through 26, which you can locate on page 174 of the two Bibles. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, if I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again to the head, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. The word of our God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
they believe the scripture and the word that Jesus has spoken. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you. disrupting 
and upending the whole system of worship itself. Trying to teach his disciples and the temple authorities something about where God shows up in the world. The authorities ask Jesus for a sign. They say, why are you doing this? And he tells them a little riddle. Destroy this temple, he says, and in three days I will raise it right back up. Everyone who's listening looks at him funny, says, that's impossible. But John gives us an aside to clue us in as the readers. He was speaking, he says, of the temple of his body. Ah, that's right. Do you remember back at Epiphany, a month or so ago, when we were talking about the Axis Mundi, the mythological center of the world, the place where heaven and earth meet? This is the place where God's glory is revealed, where the divine presence is known to dwell, where God is with us. For the Jews of Jesus' time, the Axis Mundi was the Jerusalem Temple. If you are a human, this is where you can go to meet God. But Jesus is here in that temple, turning over tables, disrupting the whole system, because incarnation changes things. Now the Word has become flesh and dwelt among us. Now the Axis Mundi, the center of the earth, the place where heaven and earth, divine and human meet, is a person, flesh and blood, the body of Jesus Christ. Of course, now Jesus' physical body has come and gone. But the Apostle Paul teaches, as Rob read for us, now you, y'all, are the body of Christ, the church, and individually you are members of it. Yours is the flesh and blood in which God is pleased to dwell. We, the church, are called to be the place where heaven and earth meet. And I think that that is exactly why Jesus marches in here this second Sunday of Lent in this morning's Gospel reading and decides to drive us out. Jesus looks at us, the gathered Christian community, and he says, What are you still doing here? Get up, get out of those pews, and get yourself out into the world. Go to Enos Garcia family night, read to a child, or eat dinner with a parent or grandparent. Laugh with them. Listen to what weighs on their hearts, their grief, their fear. Show my face to them and let them show my face to you. Or get yourself down to share a table to the St. James Food Pantry, the men's shelter, the nest shelter, and feed my sheep. Look one another in the eye. Smile at the people you meet. Share your food and your compassion and your stories. Be together in community with friends and with strangers. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. <clears throat> Go to the Living Center, Jesus says and visit someone who's lonely. Go take cookies to the fire department or the sheriff's office. Come back to this place, the church, yes, to get fueled up to worship, to be together in your family of faith. But don't linger too long. No, because there is work to do. The world needs its temple, the body of Christ, place where heaven and earth at last 
could meet. In just a moment, we'll sing a hymn. It's likely new to some of you, but a few of you may know it. I learned it when I lived in Peru. A group of Peruvian pres Presbyterians, say that five times fast, taught it to me when I was living in Lima. And the second piece just about sums the whole thing up. The angels are not sent into our world of pain to do what we were meant to do in Jesus' name. That falls to you and me, and all who are made free. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray, to do your will today. Friends, body of Christ, we are the place where heaven and earth meet. So let's get out of here and live like it. invite you to rise in body, spirit, or both, and join in him number 747. What are our instructions, Mark? We're singing it. We're singing it in English and in Spanish. So let's sing it to the first in English. And it's two repeats. You'll notice the first two lines, then it repeats. So we'll do that first in English and go back and do that part in Spanish. And then we go down and we do the, the second part. We do it in Spanish. I mean English and Spanish, and then we go back and do the whole thing again, right? Excellent. And if, if you can't sing in Spanish, or if you can't sing in English, just choose your language.
Peace be with you.
for budding, hospitalized, and they don't know what's wrong, prayers for rapid healing. God, in your mercy. Prayers of thanksgiving for a new addition to uh, Carol and Jim White's family, sweet baby James, for being born healthy and utterly adorable. God, in your mercy. For Laureen, who just had eye surgery for complete healing and restored sight. God, in your mercy. Prayers of thanksgiving that Dave and Linda are home. God, in your mercy. All these things we lift up to you, O oh God. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, God has given us so much. Let us take a moment to give back a piece of what we've received as we receive the morning off. And I think we need to, because our, our deacon is not here, I think we need two offering people. Any takers? One. Four. All right. Find it out. <laughs>
They found some loose tiles and moved them aside and dug a hole. They made the hole very large. So go from the steps to the square. Uh -huh. Okay. The friends gently lowered their friend down on his mat through the hole. forgiven. So this is when he was looking up. <clears throat> the man who could not walk immediately stood up. <laughs> he gathered up his mat and walked right out the front door in front of everyone. Fold up our mat and let's walk out the front door. Let's walk out the front door.
of Christ. You are the body of Christ. So go out there. So go out there. And live like it. And live like it. Friends, go in love and peace. And as you go, may joy and nothing less guide you on the way. May you be blessed, and oh, may you be a blessing. And may light, love's own crucified, risen light, guide you and countless others all the way home. Amen. 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 Let's walk on out. We can go two by two. How about that? You two, and then you two. I know it's not big enough. I wish I could hold your hand.